Did I get it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a million dollars. He only speaking wolf. Uh, <laughs> oh, his man. name is Joseph Caldwell. Yes. And we are the sales wolves. We are. Oh. Oh. That was oh. A, that sounded a little more <laughs> a little Spartan. A little more Spartan. That was a benign Spartan-esque. howl. That was a benign howl. Episode 17. Yeah. Man, we're here. Let's do it. Today we're going to talk about freedom, but before we do, um, I feel free to talk about it. I and there's a I reason feel, for that. You feel free. I feel dumb. This is perfect. Let's just put ourselves together. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we get started, we do want to go over our twofold task here at the Sales Wolf Podcast. <laughs> and uh, first task is to just show support and appreciation for salespeople everywhere. All over the um, place. Never has it been more needed, underappreciated salespeople True. just out there hustling. Never has uh, it been more misunderstood, too. Yeah, yeah. Right? That everybody's a salesperson. Every, yeah, every yeah, single person. Absolutely. And so appreciation, support, and then actual training and tips and, 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 uh, and tactics that you can use to make yourself better, that you can use to um, close more sales, that you can use to um, just become a better person. Mm-hmm. That's, the, uh, that's the goal. So let's go right back in to the <laughs> that stuff is good. To the topic, I know it is good. God. To the topic of today, uh, which right. is freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. It's my favorite topic. My favorite topic. The only reason we can be in a place, the only reason that we can be in a place where being an entrepreneur is even an option, mm. having a job or varying jobs is even an option having a say by way of activity in your pay is even an option um, by having the right to own anything that that's even an option there's a reason why we have those freedoms yeah. and most people take them for granted and they never wonder like God, I wonder why do I live in such an awesome place where I can I can choose to absolutely fuck my life up or I can choose to absolutely do something great with it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to bleep that out. <laughs> but <laughs> but Put um, like freedom of your mouth. Freedom. It's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. So what you saying? It doesn't include me. <laughs> In the immortal words of that was a rap group or something. What was that? Right. Anyway, um, so that's the title of today's podcast: is freedom, and we want to talk about freedom. Where? What? Who paid the price? Where did it come from? Tyler, you come from a uh, um, long line of a military family of mm-hmm. distinguished service, yeah. and you got to do some pretty unique things at the end. When the end of last year, about it eight, was eight months ago, it was about a year ago, yeah, about a year Maybe ago, right about a year ago, yeah. So my uh, my dad was in the third range of battalion, captain of the third range of battalion. Um, grandfather was chief of staff of Fort Benning, so he was a uh, was a full colonel. Um, very, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, not awarded, not reward. Uh, what? Um, a lot of medals. What is that called? Distinguished. Dis- um, what's the other word? Not distinguished. Not awarded. Very uh, decorated. Free. Decorated. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> they make it decorated. It's like the girliest word that they could use for that. But right. That's what it's called. Yeah, he's very he's um, highly decorated. Absolutely. That's what they call yeah. I uh, was in for a, a long time. Vietnam, uh, Korean War. Uh, veteran was shot down three times um, yeah. in a helicopter. Um, so he's got every kind of just pain. He's still alive. Um, and it's just an awesome, awesome, awesome human being. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can't talk about freedom uh, without first talking about you know those that uh, protect our freedom. Um, That's right. Overseas and and then here on our own soil, uh, which is so near and dear to both of our hearts for sure. It is big time, big time. Yeah. 
And so, you know, one of the things that we've talked about a lot before, not necessarily on this podcast, is is it's one of the, the biggest disconnects in this country is the lack of um, real appreciation when it comes mm-hmm. to actual like I don't know things that matter like compensation things like that Mm -hmm. for the heroes in our country Uh, the fact that an enlisted an enlisted person in the military if they've got two kids or more and and the spouse doesn't work the fact that they are probably eligible for food stamps is absolutely ridiculous I I remember the I can't remember the actual uh, statistics but I want to say it was like 2013 it was like it was like over 15%. I can't, I'll have to find the actual numbers, but it was an insanely large amount of the, the number of food stamps that were um, used on military commissaries, on military bases, which is just absolutely ridiculous to, even, just, to even fathom being overseas somewhere, risking your life every single day, and knowing that your, your wife or your husband is back home using food stamps to buy like bread and milk. Doesn't even, just that's the most ridiculous. asinine thing I've ever thought of. And then translating that back into on U.S. soil with um, with our first responders in the yeah. country that are protecting our borders here. Uh, it's the exact same thing. They don't get paid um, near enough. Nothing. Not, it's, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's interesting as we have holidays um, like Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Veterans Day, these things that, that come up and people are like, oh, we love our, we happy, love our nation's heroes. Ha- I'm so tired of hearing it and... and Happy Veterans Day, yeah. Happy Memorial Day. Ain't a damn thing happy about people dying, yeah. right? There's a and and I sent a message out about it. I don't know if you heard it yet, but um, that I think I was going to coin the phrase "Grateful Memorial Day." Hmm. Grateful yeah. Memorial Day yeah. to you, because it's a it's a it's a sense of gratitude that you should be mm-hmm. filled with that somebody was willing to guard this freedom, the sheepdog, with his life, mm-hmm. with her life. And it's interesting, we, we had a long conversation with Gary Vaynerchuk about this. Um, literally sitting around, there was in total six or seven of us. Yeah, probably. Um, I think there was five or six of us, and then Gary Vaynerchuk and Andy Frisella. We sat in a conference room for two and a half hours one night, and for probably 30, 45 minutes of that conversation, we sat there and talked about this very topic. Yeah. And it was so interesting to me uh, what Gary said. He was like, the reality is businesses, business people, they don't give a crap about the military but they he said corporations he, massive corporations and he said they don't they don't care about those things but they care about the appearance of caring about those things yeah. um, and he even brought it down from the corporate level to remember the small business side where he was like they just don't care they're, just, they're not going to care um, but it was an interesting conversation that we had about the appearance of caring yeah. that they'll throw probably tons of money uh, at, the at the appearance of, care. of looking uh, looking like they care, um, but anyways, that's that's a whole other subject. But but freedom is the topic today. There's a bunch of things that we want to jump into uh, and roll right through. And the number one um, story uh, that Joseph was going to talk about is the Delaware. Yeah, Delaware. it's all about it. It's a it's a neat thing, man. People don't even learn these things anymore. But first, I want to say I just got a chance to have lunch with um, with Tom Shea. Yeah, and he's coming to do our Top Gun training and. 23-year Navy SEAL, um, just unbelievable. Almost out of the book. It's awesome. His Unbreakable. book, Unbreakable, is fantastic. We're going to have him on the podcast. We're going to do it. He, he, we talked about that today, man. We're doing a podcast from here with him. Ooh. And uh, Yeah, there we go. Unbreakable. It's incredible, man, right? It really is. And just talking with him about some of the things he went through and some of the things that, that he withstood, it's it's. It's absolutely fascinating. And his, uh, to me, one of the most interesting things is stuff about his wife. His his wife is tough a freaking as hell. rock. Tough as hell. Insane. Yes. Tough as hell. Um, but uh, but it's t- it's men like this. It's men like this that were that were willing, right? It's women like this that were willing to go. That we all owe a debt of gratitude mm-hmm. to. Um, and it may, it may, it gives me pause. And I am so thankful for them. Um, he, uh, I'm excited to learn from him and excited to have more interactions with him in particular. Um, was watching some stuff by Jocko Willink mm. as well. Mm. Dude, he's a wild man. Yeah. His social media stuff is off the mm. hook, man. If you right. see his stuff, and he's crazy. Mm-hmm. He's got that. He's got that aggressive adrenaline inline oh, yeah. um, Navy SEAL deal locked in. Mm-hmm. Like he owns that space. Yeah. But uh, but uh, 
moving on, like some somebody you may not have ever heard of, because our history books, man, we leave a lot of it out of there, and you know, I won't even pretend to understand why some of our true history is not even in the books, but talking about the Delaware deadlock, I asked Tyler, I asked everybody in the room the other day if they'd ever heard of the Delaware deadlock, if they'd ever heard of Caesar Rodney, and nobody had. Nobody had. Not in our education system do people learn about Caesar Rodney anymore, and he happens to be on the Delaware quarter. Did you know that? Hmm. I did not. He's on there. So Caesar Rodney on the quarter. And, uh, and so um, when we were determining whether to throw off the the uh, the shackles, <laughs> the taxation shackles of, of Great Britain, um, and, and we were voting on that, right? There's 13 colonies, and there had to be a majority, and um, there was, uh, they call it the Delaware deadlock because there was, there was three delegates from each colony, and they had all voted, and Delaware, it came down to Delaware. Hmm. And so that's why they call it the Delaware deadlock, and there was only two of the uh, representatives there. One was yes, mm -hmm. and one was no. And, uh, and so they go, where's the third representative? Well, it was Caesar Rodney. And a little bit of background on him was he had a, an extreme uh, cancer of the uh, of disease of the throat and face. And the only doctor that could save him at that time uh, was in England. And he had already sold everything he had, cashed in on everything, and booked passage paid for for himself to England. And, and and sent money ahead of him to this doctor. And so uh, it was his, he, he, this was his shot at saving his life, right? This is his shot at, at, at living. And, and he, was the, he was the representative in, in Delaware. And so they sent riders who rode horses into the ground. It was a torrential downpour that night. They rode horses into the ground getting to him. And he rode two horses into the ground getting back. Sick as he was, he, he, he got there, it was either mid-morning or mid-afternoon, I cannot remember, the next day. It was 90 miles away that they had come. He had to literally be carried in. He was so exhausted, he had to be carried in on the back of two. And when he got in there, he voted yes for freedom and to go to war. Hmm. And, and you think about that and you go, well, he, well, that's all well and good. Well, what did he do when he did that? signed his own death warrant. He signed his own death warrant. Everything he, he knew he'd never get passage. He knew he'd never make it to that doctor and he knew he would die. And he did. And now his money was all gone. He just went. And his money was all gone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so it's men like that. It's stories like this that, man, that, that, that gives me pause. It makes me pause and go, am, am I doing everything that I need to do? Not only am I doing everything in business? Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing for this country? Am I, am I appreciating those men and women? Right? I have a, um, my cousin is married to one of my good friends from, from high school and he's forced reconnaissance in the, in the Marines. Have I expressed enough appreciation to him for what he's done? He did three tours as a sniper in Afghanistan and, uh, and now runs three teams of six for, for forced recon. Hmm. And um, he's a, I th he was a gunny sergeant last time I checked, but he may have even progressed beyond that. But, uh, but man, it's all about what do you do? What do you do to be thankful for this freedom? And number one, that's, that's the ticket. We gotta show gratitude. Mm -hmm. Number two, to sit and squander it and not to take advantage of the liberties is a slap in the face of dead men and women that have died to protect it. Mm -hmm. And that I cannot tolerate. That, that makes me want to throw up to see people squandering the liberties that we have here. If they only knew, go to North Korea if you can get in and you damn sure won't get back out and see what it's like there. Yeah. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to, to, to tout this, uh, you know, I'm gonna get into a political discussion here. <laughs> but it's a moral obligation. If you're given, if if you have been given this freedom to be able to do basically what you want, and to be yeah. able to go and to make a living, and to provide for your family, and to um, do all of these things because of what these others have done, then it becomes a moral and almost ethical responsibility to like, who am I not to? Um, 
and we're not saying you have to achieve certain benchmarks of success, but you have to be willing to go all in and give it 100%. Whether, whether, that's, your, to? whether that's your business, whether yeah. that's your job, yeah. whether that's your marriage, whether it's you as a father or, 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 or as, a, as a mother, mm -hmm. you've got to be willing to go all in. You have the freedoms to do that now. I, I, I'm telling you, man, I can just picture it one day. Our, our great, 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 great grandkids are going to be looking. They'll be sitting in a fat estate that they didn't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna be looking over the fireplace and they're gonna see you and Maitland over the fireplace, right? You see that big statue of me grabbing the bull by the horns? My grandkids will not be seeing <laughs> a statue. Will not be seeing <laughs> you're, you. You're not. But you. <laughs> they'll you're be seeing me. Right. But you, <laughs> my son may marry your daughter. You better trace her. <laughs> but, but man, I, you know, I have a feeling that things won't always, Liberty has, a, has Throughout the centuries, liberty is always attacked. Mm -hmm. And it's watered with the blood of patriots. The mm -hmm. tree of liberty is watered with the blood of patriots. And if it's not, then it's ruled by tyrants. Mm -hmm. And if we go through a phase wherever we don't have the liberties we have now, which it looks like, hey, we could. Mm -hmm. It could happen. Mm -hmm. If we go through that, then what? what's uh, my great-grandkids, my great-great-great-great-grandkids, your great-great-grandkids, when they're looking at that picture of you and Maitland over the over the fireplace, or me and Kim over the fireplace, I want them to be able to go. I want them to be able to go. You know, you remember when people were free, hmm. and and there was that there was that short two hundred years hmm. where people were free, truly free to create and go and do and change their socioeconomic status, change where they were going. Remember what? Man, I'm so glad our great great grandfather did that. So glad mm -hmm. that Tyler did what he did, that Joseph did what he did, right? And that should be your legacy you want to leave. You should oh, yeah. think about this for the future. Um, anyway, that's the way we see it. So there's a, some interesting concepts when you when you look at the difference between the perception of freedom that mm -hmm. a lot of people have and what, actually, what freedom actually is. And so, yeah. especially when you talk about financial freedom right. and... and um, certain levels of success and the freedom that comes along with that. And so what we want to kind of do is break that down a little bit and uh, give you maybe a little dose of reality, but give you um, some, some real world, <laughs> a, a real world take on what actual uh, success looks like and the fact that it really doesn't come with more freedom, it comes with more responsibilities. More responsibilities. Uh, there's a couple of uh, quotes that I found uh, that I wanted to mention. And one of them is, the moment you take responsibility for everything in your life is the moment you can change anything in your life. Uh, so when you talk about what actual freedom is, that was Hal Elrod. Uh, he wrote um, uh, The Miracle Morning. That's a great book. There's a couple of good quotes from him. Yeah, uh, the other one good. says, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will ultimately be successful. Sure. Um, and so that kind of gets into our next point, which we'll kind of tie these two together, which is that true freedom is doing what you love to do. Uh, but what are some of those things that people say about financial freedom and, oh, well, one day when I get to that level, then I'll be able to be free to do well, they, X. Well, they, 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 they look at it like you were saying, like no re no responsibility. Yeah. The like freer I am, like I have vaca no reason. Like, it's like life's vacation. Ooh, though, yeah. Like everything just happens, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Here's the thing. A true slave has zero responsibility. Mm -hmm. A true slave. You take somebody that is a chained, shackled slave, they're not responsible for getting their food. Mm -hmm. They're just responsible for eating whatever's put in front of them. Yeah. Right? They're not responsible for their housing. They're not responsible for, for their clothing. They're not responsible for anything. Right? Mm -hmm. The farther you move up the slave chain, right, mm -hmm. you become more and more responsible. Yeah. I, don't ref I, don't, I mean, I'm, it's just what it is. Yeah. And, and, and as you progress and you take on more responsibility, that's the freer, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I got up at 2 o'clock this morning. I was working from 2 to now, and it's what, 2 in the afternoon or something? That's 12 hours in already. I'm not done. I'm not even remotely done, mm -hmm. right? I'll still be a great dad tonight. I'll still be a great husband tonight. I'll still do all these things. I'm not, it, workaholic has never been... I don't understand what that means. That's just something somebody came up with that, that they didn't want to work very hard. Mm -hmm. So they called it workaholic, like an alcoholic. Like, you're, <laughs> like that's ridiculous. 
I mean, there can never be too much alcohol. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I don't even drink, by the way, <laughs> anymore. Um, <laughs> but, any less. Uh, or, or any less. <laughs> but um, but uh, I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? It's so with great success comes great responsibility. Right. I mean, that's the the more successful you are, the more um, and whatever that. I mean, success is different to every single person. It is different. That's but whatever a, that's that means to you. Thing. But whatever that means to you, the when you reach that, you will have more responsibilities at that point, and will feel less free from a um, from a uh, act, uh, actionable like from a, things that you have to do on a daily basis. You will not feel as free. Um, you will have the flexibility, which I think flexibility is freedom. can be perceived as as freedom mm -hmm. when you have the flexibility to do it on your own time, things like things like that. Uh, but there's a, a freedom myth that I found, and it says when I get to the top, I'll no longer be limited. And what it said is when you move up in an organization, the weight of your responsibility increases. The amount of responsibility you take on increases faster than the amount of authority, authority you receive. So the amount That's of responsibility true. that you take on increases faster than the amount of authority that you receive as you move your way up. Did in somebody an say that or did you make that up after no. going through this organization? No. <laughs> Still waiting for some of that authority. <laughs> Where's that quote? Where the hell's that one at? Uh, that's funny. Just now it's like little chihuahua barking as I just thought of. Dude. Like, hey, listen to me. Dude, that's not funny. <laughs> no, but it's true. So, I mean, if you, if you think about it, um, the more successful that you are, uh, the more things that will be required of you to do on a daily basis, and the more, it's not just a responsibility from a well, today I'm responsible for this task, this task, this task. It's mm -hmm. no, now today I'm responsible for these hundred lives yeah. that work for our organization. Now I'm responsible for these 25 managers that work yeah. on this part of our company. Now I'm responsible. Now when you start taking on the responsibility of other families and other people's livelihood uh, as you start building a business and, and growing an organization, that's when it really, that's when it really, I think, takes hold in someone, and I know you talk about this all the time, is like that's, that's what gets you up out of, out of, That's right. out of bed every day. It's not, um, you know, I have to go to my office because I have uh, 18 things on my calendar, the 18 meetings that I have today. It's no, I've got the weight of the world or the weight of this entire organization it's, all on my back. It's the freedom to be Atlas. Mm -hmm. It's the freedom yeah. to shoulder that and to choose to shoulder that, be okay with that, and understand that that is freedom. Yeah. And then to be thankful and grateful yep. um, on top of that. That's the ticket. That is the ticket. And so true freedom would, would ultimately be doing what you love to do every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, there's something we need to talk about here, which is you hear that so often. It's, it's absolutely cliche to say, do what you love to do and you know, you'll never work a day in your life, blah, blah, blah. Remember my dad used to always tell me, he's like, if, they, if, it, if it was fun, it would, wouldn't be called work, it'd be called a hobby, you know, or something yeah, like yeah. that along those lines. So it, it's not always the actual task that you're involved in on a daily basis, every hour of the day, you're like, man, I love this. You know, like, I just had to fire three people and it was awesome. Fantastic. You know, like, every single aspect, it's not that, it's, it has a lot to do with, with um, the people that you're able to work with. Yeah. Choosing to be able to work with people that you enjoy being around. Um, when does that come into play? <laughs> this does not translate to podcast world. <laughs> Which we make a fortune off of. Uh, true freedom is owning one podcast with 17 episodes and living on the royalties. Oh, man. <laughs> no, but it's. <laughs> Multi millions in this world. <laughs> But there we is, do this for the money. <laughs> but there's so many things. It's, it's not just the, I really enjoy playing the violin, so I'm going to figure out a way to make a living out of playing a violin. That's not what we're saying. We're saying to be able to do something that has purpose. A lot of it has True. to do with being able to find a purpose in what you're doing, a passion for what yeah. you're doing, um, and ultimately being able to wake up and not dreading what you're about to do. Yeah. You, you're going to dread a couple of things uh, here and there. This is just a part of any uh, any occupation or yeah. career or, or purpose. Uh, but ultimately, being able to do what you want, when you want, uh, is, is being able to have um, 
that that ultimate uh, freedom. And so the last thing I'll say here, Nelson Mandela uh, said, money won't create success, the freedom to make it will. And man, I really, really love that because if you, t if you think about the freedom to make it, if you, if you call that the ability to make it, so it's not that the money that you have right now is giving you freedom, but the, the ability for me to know that no matter what happens in any business that we're involved in, if tomorrow we can pick up, go all in, and we're going to succeed somehow, we're gonna succeed. Yeah. that's freedom. And that's that just peace freedom. of mind and, and um, gives you that peace of mind of being able to, to go throughout your daily you know, life and not be always... Nervous Absolutely, so that me, is true freedom. To me, that, that I is love freedom. that saying. That's yeah. great. Nelson so the Mandela. next did episode you know that, that Amanda I did. crashed Nelson Mandela's birthday party mm -hmm. in Africa. That's really cool. I wish I'd been there. Anyway, we should have her on as a guest. We, we already did. We already did <laughs> when I was gone. So the next episode coming up next Friday is on finding your purpose. And are we going to have a guest on for that one? Possibly. Who was it? That We're talking about having uh, from Vistage, uh, I believe. Oh, I can ask yeah. him. Yeah, I forgot about So that. we may have a guest on for that yeah. one. It's going to be a great one. Uh, but with that, I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh. Oh. That sounds... That sounds weird. <laughs>